Let's go out to Sean Salisbury, uh, NFL Odyssey Insider. You can hear him on Mondays with Lorenzo Sean. Neal, 6 to 7. That's called the football hour. You don't want to miss it. Sean, thanks as always for joining us. No problem, guys. Good to be on with you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, the, the 49ers feel like a team that, that has some issues to deal with, and I want to run, a, run one by you to start. Uh, Jimmy Ward basically saying that he's been playing out of position and he's only got one year left on his contract, but he's going to try to be a team player and, and do what they say. Read into that for me, ex-professional uh, athlete Sean. Um, playing out of position meaning he doesn't like where they've got him. He, he wants to play, obviously, uh, the, a, a different position in the secondary, correct? Is Safety that what he's saying? instead yeah, of yeah. nickel, we're, yeah. We're, we're, right, he feels like he's better... Uh, in space than he is on the slot or playing on a corner when it's nickel and you're playing over the inside receiver. Um, and maybe that's true. I, I don't know, but has this discussion been had? I guess my first question would be, has a discussion been had with the defensive backfield coach and the coordinator and the head coach, right? And, uh, you know, I think we all uh, are in situations where you see it's like a guy who wants to get the ball more that's not or I understand. And then the question is, is he doing it because of the contract or is he doing it because he wants what's best for the team? I don't know him um, from a distance. And you cover these things up when you're playing, when, you, when you're winning. And yet the 49ers have one of the better defenses in the league. So if he's playing out of position, and I know they struggled against Kansas City, but who doesn't? Um, but when they're healthy, we're talking about first, second, third best defense in the league. So I, I get it. Maybe he feels more comfortable, but I, for me, that's a conversation you have in private. And if he's had it in private, then maybe we should get the coach's opinion and say he's out of position. But it's also a compliment by the coaches. If you're playing out of position and we know he wants to play safety, but he doesn't like playing nickel or over the slot, then um, maybe the coaches are giving you a compliment saying we're fortunate that you're versatile enough to help us out right now and we know what your true position is. Sean, always a pleasure. Let me ask you this. You just said something. When they're healthy, and I told Stani and the listeners, I'm shocked that this Niner team is 3-4, and four, but we don't know when Armstead's coming back. Debo may not play. I know you got C-Mac, but my bigger question to you is, coming into this game, who would you rather be moving forward, the Niners or Rams? And the reason I ask you that is the Rams, okay, at least you can identify it's the old line That's what's ailing us. But with this Niner team, I don't know what it is. That's one hell of a point. Um, I, it's, I, you, if you would have said, Sean, what's the best way to attack the, uh, for, the, the 49ers to attack the Rams this week? I would have said exploit their last of, lack of physicality, which means their offensive line. That is 100% correct. So that is a great point. And I'm with you. I'm still trying to figure out, I think I, and, and, and I mentioned this to Lo Neal, what their identity is. At this stage of the season, there's only a couple teams in the league that I'm still trying. I'm, I'm, my head's scratched to what they're like. Cleveland has been kind of up and down trying to figure out, well, they don't tackle well. They're supposed to be a better defense, and we know they got Nick Chubb, and they don't do the same thing here. I know what they want to do. We, we know 49ers want to run the football, play defense, throw the ball about 25 to 28 times, run it 35 to 42 times and win. But I, I would still rather be the 49ers because let, let's say everybody gets healthy. One thing I can't replace, guys, during a season, you're either physically, it's like a heavyweight champion. You're either a knockout guy or you're a dance around, stick and move guy and hopefully win on points. Mm. And that's who the Rams are now. Now they won the Super Bowl, all credit, and they had a, did the, everything went great for them last year. Stick and move, and without Andrew Whitworth, this team's not a physical team on the offensive side of the ball. If they don't finesse you to death, they're not beating you. They're just not. At least I know with the 49ers, while you're 100% correct, I'm not sure. Well, is it injuries? Well, when they're healthy, is it the passing game? And when it's a pass, is it the commitment to the run game? Uh, well, what is it? But the question is, I know that they, on all three layers, when they're defensively healthy, and I'm not making an excuse for them, how elite they're on offense, at least I know what Kyle's, what, what, what he wants to do. He wants to run it, and now with McCaffrey, and when Debo's healthy, they're all on the field, and, and, and Kittle, and Ayuk. I know that there's so many different ways I can deploy those two guys, especially Debo and McCaffrey, that I'm going to put all kinds of stress on a defense. With the Rams, we know who they are, right? They want to throw it. They want to finesse you, and they want Aaron Donald and that defense to get some of the push that they get, but they're not going to line up and run the ball 40 times and dominate you at the line of scrimmage. So I'd rather be the team that I know can be physical as opposed to the team that I know can't be on the offensive line. You ain't fixing that during the season. Mm. Sean Salisbury joining us on 95-7 The Game. All right, Sean, I know you are a hell of a basketball player. Sometimes uh -oh. I like to 
use an analogy <laughs> with, with yeah. football and basketball, but you tell me if, if there's anything to this. And I'm, I'm thinking of Christian McCaffrey. So I look at the Cleveland Cavaliers box score after game one in mm-hmm. basketball, and I see that Donovan Mitchell took 21 shots, their newly acquired guard from Utah. Nobody else took more than nine. And I just thought, huh, that's interesting. He just, you know, just, he's a scorer, but he just got there. Right. So Christian McCaffrey, if he's healthy, he's going to get between, what, 18, 20 touches a game? Like, he's going to become their leading ball toucher right away. And that's an adjustment, isn't it? So how, do you, how does he help you as opposed to, well, he's just another guy getting numbers? Right, and you also, and and, he, and and the third layer to that is when he was in Carolina, he could put up all these numbers and right. didn't do squat for them winning, right? Yeah. You, you're exactly right. And at that position, um, it's very difficult to impact when the rest of your team's not very good. I'll tell you what it does, and I, I actually believe, in my opinion, that if I was calling plays and I'm not, but looking at it, or if I was trying to defend the 49ers, Let's say you get what guys on the average, what do we average, about 65 offensive plays a game, 65 to 70, and that range is, is usually what you get on a normal week, right? All right. I, I, would, I would say that between McCaffrey and Debo Samuel when, when he's on the field, I, I would think targets, meaning attempted passes and or touches and running back and from the backfield or jet sweeps or throws to them. If they're not getting 40 targets between them a game, then I think the 49ers are making a major mistake. Now, that may be 24 to one and 16 to the other. It may be 20 and 20. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But here, here's what happens. What you can't do is you'll still, get, you'll still get more production from McCaffrey on 20 touches than you will on 32 touches in Carolina just because the nature of who the 49ers are, in my opinion, and with Debo, because what happens now, if Debo, let's say he lines up in a slot, McCaffrey's in the backfield, or one's in the backfield, and they motion out, the other stays, or both are lined up, and you empty the backfield. First off, who are you going to double when Kittle's in the game as well? Secondly, where are you rolling your coverage to? Okay, well, you think this guy's a better receiver. Well, what happens if they flip him back to the backfield and we run toss sweep one way? So I don't think you have to worry about, oh, my gosh, is it going to take away from somebody else, and are they just going to focus on McCaffrey? I actually think McCaffrey, and let's say he has a game, well, last week, what was it? 10 c- touches for 60-some yards and made an impact. They didn't win because yeah. it's Kansas City. But think about what a defense has to do even when McCaffrey doesn't touch it. Like having, like having in a different way, like Derrick Henry in the backfield. He's going to dominate because you know he's going to run it. But on the days he doesn't, let's say he touches it 22 times, that means play action and all the other guys are getting into the act. So while I, I don't think it'll be, and I think part of what you're saying is empty numbers, empty stats, I don't think it'll be empty. I think his impact alone on how you have to defend the 49ers and deploy your defense against all those guys will make him effective with six to eight to ten less touches. And there may be a game when he's hot and you give it to him 30 times sure. in, in you know, touches. So I'm not real worried about the empty. Now, they start focusing on him, meaning giving it to him all the time, and the offense is stagnant, then you've got to find a way to deploy it. But this is a great opportunity for Kyle to expand even more of what he does, not only with the quarterback, but with the running game, just on formational situations alone. Sean, I told my partner over the years, you know what, Kittle could be Kelsey. He may not be uh, th- th- that, but he's in that th- at that table. That's just what I yep. think of Kittle, but they have him block. I get it, team player. And I also gave Kyle Shanahan credit because I said, you know what, when things come up like last year, I you. You know, being in the doghouse, nothing would seep out. But all of a sudden, Kittle saying things after the game, talking about the defense. Guys not named Bosa and Warner need to step up. We got all. He went down a list of um, itemized all the guys on the offense. They should be producing more. Ayuk saying little things like we should be able to get more than twenty three points. You hear Jimmy Ward's comments, and I ask you, you know the dynamics of a locker room when you hear that. Is the vase starting to crack a little bit in regard to to Kyle Shanahan? And is that, you know, these players kind of bucking the system, getting getting fed up? Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm, if it was, let, let's just, and, and I, I've been thinking a lot about this because as you guys know, and I'll tell you the alarming stat that we, that you guys know, and I brought it up to low on Monday night and think about it. Think, guys, they are one for 30. Yeah. Oh. One for 30, one, one and 30, should I say when they are behind three points or more in the fourth quarter. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I, I, that's the most alarming statistic in the league to me. With, that, with the team that good, right. it tells me that if they're not winning, 
they're screwed in the fourth quarter. With, with I'm just going by hit. Hey, but that, why, guys, that's not, why that's, are they that, screwed? Right, that, that's not a stat. That's 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 evidence, right, guys? That is pure evidence. One in thirty. And I'm a, your point is so valid. Is that if it would have just been George? Who's a team captain? If he would have just come out because it's it's un- George always in house leader. We're going to get this thing fixed. If one time Kittle comes out and says that guy's got to play better, we all do. This guy, this guy, I would listen. It's like E.F. Hutton, you know the old when E.F. Hutton talks old <laughs> school. People listen, but like in Green Bay and in, in, in Tampa, it's starting to happen so often. It's starting to fall on deaf ears, I think, and their performance has shown it. But w- w- your point too is Jimmy, George. Ayuk, and that goes back, and you know where that arrow starts to lean back to. Isn't there an under, an under, uh, an undertone that says, "Is it, is it, coaches? What are we doing here? One guy's mad; he's out of position. Another thinks guys, a bunch of guys, got to step mm-hmm. up. Another thinks more production. Another thinks that they got to score more than twenty-three points. Well, they're either talking to each other or they're talking to the people who are calling the plays or running the show. But your point to the fracture. You're in danger with the more guys that speak, the more clicks there is, and the more you start to say, well, why does everybody feel like they got to talk out loud and air this laundry as opposed to one leader or one or, or, or in-house? It is a good – it's something to keep an eye on. Let's say they lose to the Rams and lose another game. Will the cracks get – will the fracture turn into a crack and turn mm-hmm. into a break? Or do they nip that in the bud right off the bat? I don't have a problem when a leader calls a guy out once in a while or, or, or like George did because he'll back it up. The key is when all the, when there's a whole bunch of chefs deciding they want to cook the meal, then you start to say, are we playing as a team or are we starting to jump into this individual thing? I think it's something to look on because we don't hear that much coming out of San Francisco from the players. Yeah, no, you're right, Sean. Hey, Sean, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Have a great weekend, man. I appreciate you guys. Always great to be on with you. Astros and six. Book it. I'm on my way there right now. Oh, there have go. fun, man. Have there fun. Thanks, guys. All right, all right fellas. Thank uh, you. Yeah.